Uh, Martin Heidegger was born on September 26, 1889 in Merskrik, Germany. Uh, he was born to a local Roman Catholic church, and he uh, his, his family wasn't very like wealthy, but uh, due to his uh, abilities to you know, think at a more intellectual level, he earned himself a scholarship, a religious scholarship, to go to the school or the University of Friedberg, where he uh, he earned a doctorate in philosophy and a uh, a dissertation in psychocatholicism. Uh, for those of you who don't know, psychocatholicism is the ph philosophical position according to which psycho which psychology plays a central role in grounding or explaining some other non-psychological type of fact or law. Um, two years later, Heidegger completed his habitulation thesis, and this is the highest academic qualification in many countries in Europe and Central Asia. Attaining this gave him the ability to teach philosophy in Germany. He was a man of religion, even though he uh, kind of backed away from the Catholic Church and took up a, a more of a Western philosophy uh, view of things. Uh, he was elected as, as rector of Fraunberg University on April 21st, 1933, and he joined the National Socialist German Workers Party, or the Nazi Party, on May 1st. Uh, in this inaugural address as rector, he expressed how much he was in support of the German Revolution. Heidegger began speaking on behalf of Hitler's national ref referendum to withdraw Germany from the League of Nations. As he proclaimed in one of his speech, let not doctrines and ideas be your guide. The Fuhrer in Germany, only reality and law. Heidegger continued to support Hitler in later years of the war, In uh, though with somewhat less enthusiasm than he had shown in the early years. Uh, he also did what he could to rid uh, the, the German place of any Jewish scholars and took away any studies of Jewish doctrines, kind of said they weren't what they, like they weren't important. This, this person that's voicing for someone like Hitler and being the voice of Hitler, and not, or not the voice, but uh, promoting someone like that, and has backing from someone like that, I would be a little less willing to go against this person's beliefs. And so I feel like fear or just blind ignorance to what sort of thing was going on conveyed a lot of the faculty to kind of just f fall on board with, with what was going on, much like what happened with a lot of the people in the Nazi party. And just the students, I, I, I feel because of their youth and their... Being in a college situation, you're obviously there to learn, and your professors can easily influence you by just feeding you the wrong information. So I, I feel mm -hmm. like they in, were somewhat molded to, to fit that task of what Hitler wanted from him in the universities, and th th that's what the students really just... Uh, what are the connections between Heidegger's philosophy and his goals as rector of the University of Friedberg? Uh, at the start of the 1980s, there was a lot of controversy regarding his philosophy and their relationship with his political views in the 1930s and 40s. Uh, this issue was brought up uh, because there, is, there seemed to be correlations between Heidegger's philosophical thought and his style of speculation due to the fact it was primarily totalitarian in nature and followed the ideals of the Nazi party, which he supported at the time. Uh, People who supported Heidegger's philosophy had a dominant thought for the first couple of decades after war that there was nothing inherently fascistic about Heidegger's philosophy, and the people that opposed that saw that there were parallels between the critical treatment that was discussed in Being of Time that had really fascist-oriented critiques of bourgeois liberalism. Uh, for scholars, Heidegger's philosophical critique of the condition of man in modern technological society allowed him to more or less look at the Nazi revolution uh, as a li liberation that would uh, make the world safe for being. And what he means by that is 
being in a world as existence, a form of being that is ecstatically rather than passively oriented towards its own possibilities. Uh, a philosopher, an existentialist philosopher named Carl Jaspers wrote a letter to the head of the Denazification Commission that stated, Heidegger's manner of thinking, which to me seems in essence unfree, dictatorial, and incapable of communication, would be a disastrous, would be disastrous in its teaching effects. So basically stating that his philosophy is very I don't know, juvenile in a way. It's very, it, it doesn't have a lot of momentum. It doesn't have a lot of backing behind it.